for the worship leader, set to lily of testimony, a silent prayer of David for teaching, when he struggled with Aram Naharaim and Aram Jobah, and Joab returned and struck down 12,000 of Edom in the Valley of Salt. God, you have rejected us, broken us. You have been angry. Return to us. You have made the land quake and split it apart. Heal its fractures, for it is breaking up. You have made your people see hard things. You have made us drink the wine of staggering. You have given a banner to those that fear you. Let them flee before the bowmen. Selah, answer me and save us, that your beloved might be saved. God has spoken in his holiness. I will exult. I will divide up Shechem. I will measure up the valley of Sukkoth. Gilead is mine. Manasseh is mine. Ephraim is a helmet for my head. Judah is my scepter. Moab is my washbowl. To Edom I toss my sandal. Over Philistia I will shout. Who can take me to a seed-proof city? Who can lead me into Edom? Is it not you, O God, who have rejected us? And do not go out with our armies. Help us against the enemy, for the help of man is empty. In God we can do mighty things. He will trample down our enemies. I see, I mean, this is the... <laughs> I think you, you say it's got the longest heading of, of any of the Psalms. Um, but actually, the, the fascinating thing about this particular heading is it's it's almost in tension with the rest of the Psalm, isn't it? And yes, that, I mean, it is. I think one of the, I mean, you talk about, there's some very interesting readings, um, I think the Christian and Jewish readings, which go in directly opposite directions, but someone who seems in a way to reconcile them I mean, you, uh, is is this wonderful figure of Maximus the Confessor. Who you That's right. About. Perhaps you could just tell us a little about, uh, about both the heading and about Maximus. Yes, Maximus. I mean, he's uh, he was working in a monastery near Constantinople in the early 7th century. And uh, when the Constantinople was under siege by the Avars and the Slavs, so he's sort of relocating the, the, the tension. And he notices how the um, the heading of the psalm, as you said, is very much about the success in warfare, really, and, and much more positive. But how the psalm begins, you know, oh God, you've rejected us, broken our defences and so on. And he sees that... Uh, the, the psalm is really about, re you have to read it within the meantime, living in the meantime, in other words, between um, defeat and victory. And I think that may be a theme that Malcolm is bringing out later. And he applies that then very interestingly to, to the Christian context, the ultimate victory of God over evil, but living in the meantime it, with, with suffering and defeat and, and, and difficulty. So that's Maximus's take on the psalm. And I think uh, it's quite a good way of being able to deal with a psalm, which has got some pretty horrific battle imagery in it. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's God the warrior, God the divine warrior. And yet mm. he, he takes that um, one stage further. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there's, there's more, a lot more we can unpack there. But before we do that, before I come to... Um, uh, to Malcolm's particular uh, take on on the poem, can I, uh, as usual, sort of thank you for uh, joining us again for these conversations. And um, as actually will be quite relevant in a moment to when I um, talk with with Malcolm about this, the the uh, the setting for our <laughs> um, for uh, for our writings about them all came during lockdown. So uh, Malcolm wrote um, this book, David's Crown, which were um, 150 poems responding. Uh, to the 150 uh, psalms. Um, Sue was just sort of finishing um, her three-volume study of the uh, reception of the psalms uh, through the centuries, and I was making a, uh, a selection of the, the various illustrated psalm translations um, that I've uh, done over time. And you can... Um, you can, as I've said before, you can see the um, uh, an archive of these uh, the different conversations we've had about them. If you if you look at the links uh, below, um, but 
Well, uh, Malcolm, I think that I mean, there are two sort of contexts one might talk about, because you're, this poem, I mean, that, that you, is more than any of the, perhaps of your other poems, you make a direct reference to actually the context yeah. in which you were writing it. But also, of course, it has the context of the, of the psalm before, so perhaps you could... Yeah, you could about... well, um, I was really interested to hear from Sue that Maximus the Confessor was under siege, as it were, Mm. In, in in Constantinople at this point. Now we weren't under siege, but there was a we felt like a siege, didn't it? When we were when we were locked in and we had we had all the uh, you know the death tolls rising and so on. Um and so I, I was of course wrestling with this. The core of this seemed to me to be a cry of both despair but also a suggestion that we might need to change or do something. Um, a recognition that there was a time when we seemed to feel that God was on our side, and now we're faced with a series of things, which in which we say, why, why, why aren't you, why did you even allow this to happen? Why is this going on? Um, which is very much, I think, in in the in the uh, in the psalm, even though it's battle imagery. You know, you not you do not go out with our hosts and so on. Um, Thou showed thy people heavy things. Thou hast given us to drink of a deadly wine. That that verse three really spoke to me. So there was that going on. But the other thing I suppose that was going on, which kind of came from my landing place at the previous the previous uh, psalm, where where that had been, the, the last line had been, from my false self, O Lord, deliver me. And another way of reading these psalms of conflict uh, is, for me at least, is to read them as a kind of, a series of images that might help me think about my own inner conflicts, about about not letting, you know, if I'm trying to stand for and stand in the kingdom and wait for the, you know, stand in between the times, knowing the triumph of goodness in Christ, but seeing so much of evil in the world, I have to, I, I have to be whole again. I have to make sure that I keep trusting in God, even, even when um, it seems he's not aiding us and the psalms this psalm helped me to do that so that's a, the other thing that came into this was all this place names obviously you know all the sort of succoth and you know gilead and moab is my wash pot and all of that uh, i thought i needed to reflect something of that in this psalm in my response to the psalm so i thought of all i happen to mention new york but uh, i i thought of all the places right around the world at that point from which the cry was going up to say say come come to us again help us again and and in which i think there was as i think there is in this psalm a bit of a call to repent repentance a radical thing if god isn't going out with us what have we done to you know in a sense to lose to lose the vision or alienate ourselves so so all of those things sort of came out and it became a prayer for redress, a prayer for the return of God. But the return of God into our hearts as we feel it, I think always means a change of heart. I mean, God is always there. We just have to know how to open up to him and not to trust in other things. I think one of the things that happened massively in the COVID time was that people reassessed what they depended on. They were simply suddenly without most of the things that they thought they needed. Yeah. And many people think through the Psalter were as it were driven back to this this intimate but sometimes stormy relationship with God. Yes. I mean the thing that sort of struck me about the uh, the psalm is it um I mean it's almost in sort of three well you'd say four parts if you include the 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 very long introduction but but it has first of all you know this why have you rejected me thing and then then it has um uh, and and also you know, we've we have seen awful things and and, and yeah. hard things, um, and just the actually you know I mean we were actually as you say we're seeing these things on the television which were awful things but then people those who were actually involved was in the wards and things were seeing them firsthand and obviously that's you know yeah. happening happening now but then there's this lovely prayer. Uh, answer me and save us that you're beloved and i i love that that's a yeah. yeah it's this wonderful isn't it this this very intimate term your beloved might be saved and then then you have god answering and and one of these place names sort of come in because suddenly you get this which is why i did this sort of um 
how the, the my sort of illustration came in a sense because you get this um it's almost a thing of sort of scale that, that, that everything seems um these problems seem huge but then actually seen from the perspective of, of god they're, they're just these yes. tiny little places as it were I, so, I, I love your sort of giant figure in your illustration i think mm. that's i think that's really helpful i see that in the psalms quite quite often but i see it in the whole arc of the of the old testament i mean I, it's like that you know he sits above the circles of the heavens and the inhabitants of the earth are like grasshoppers so it is a kind of new perspective and the other thing that came out for me was this sense of um, thou hast moved the land and divided it, heal the cell sores thereof, for it shaketh. I mean, that may be you know, an earthquake image. But for me, the, that image of fissures and divisions was really reflected in one of the things that came out fairly soon in, in, in the COVID times was the sharp division between how much harder COVID was for the poor than it was for the rich. I mean, if you had a garden and you had mm. worked mm. art and you had spaces to be in and you you could, you know, learn a new musical instrument or something, you know, and have stuff delivered to your door, that was one way of doing plague. But if you were living in already hand to mouth, if you couldn't afford to do a month's shopping, if you were having to go out and come back with your heart in your mouth every time because you were literally living hand to mouth, that's another, so I had that that line about um, heal the deep divisions cruelly shown by this sharp plague. That was really picking up on on what verse two suggested to me. So in a sense, what I was doing, I mean, it was not a serious, you know, it's not a proper exegesis, and none of these is a is in itself a proper exegesis of the psalm. It's really availing myself of the images that the psalm offers to try and articulate a prayer in the time we're in. Yeah. It's really interesting, Malcolm, because, in fact, within the Psalter itself, we have another psalm which uses psalms, Psalm 60, um, and it only picks out the positive parts at the end of it. It uses the second half and um, and it mixes it with Psalm 57. So we've got the, um, uh, the two, and that's also the more positive part. So it looks as if the psalm itself has had a reverberation in a later period in people's history, taking it out of all that military context of, you know, the the um, the divine warriors speak, God speaking himself and, and so on. And it becomes a, a much, much more a, 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 um, with a tone of healing and, and, and restoration, which yeah. is exactly what you, you've been doing yourself. So that model is already there in Psalm 100. Oh, that's, that's reassuring. In the, use, in the <laughs> use of the latter part of verse yeah. by verse of Psalm 60. Yeah. yeah. That's quite yeah. interesting. Oh, that's very helpful. Yeah. Oh, that's that's lovely. Well, I mean that that would <laughs> leads very naturally on to perhaps hearing hearing that response then. Mark. Okay, so I, I I use these Latin titles and sometimes they're they're just just great. So Deus repulsi not uh, not that's you know repulsi it's repel and it's also repulsive. You know, it's a wonderful word. So here it is: From my false self, O Lord, deliver me. Where I am scattered, gather me again. Turn me to you once more and turn to me, for we have all been shaken. Soothe our pain and heal the deep divisions cruelly shown by this sharp plague. All other help is vain, so be our help. Our future's all unknown to us. We trust that you will meet us there since all time is in all of time is in your hands all known and carried in your providence. Our prayer <coughs> rises from every land, from Gilead and Succoth, from you, New York, from places where your other names are spoken. All the sad and sighing tribes of earth hold up their hands, hear us, we cry, and once more make us glad. <laughs> 